her identities at all in the beginning, that I, even when I met her, right, but began to think about that. So the next question for us is, you know, what does it mean to grow our souls? Because Grace kind of personified that, didn't she, for those of you who knew her? Um, yeah, let's take the rest of the day to talk about <laughs> um, I think that, uh, well, the, the truth is that I think that um, I have to reread her. I have to re-listen to her. I have to be in calm, dialectical conversation with people to really continue to understand what it means to grow our souls. Um, I think for me, what it, um, it is about the transformation of self while we're transforming our community and transforming our world. But I think that it's deeper and much more profound than just that. Um, and uh, I'm blessed to be a part of the Movement Generation Justice and Ecology Collective and Family. And um, Grace's ideas have totally transformed and influenced us. Um, and this is particularly one of the pieces I think that's important to me and to us as an organization. Growing our souls, um, meaning that, um, that we can't just stop, uh, stop our revolution at critical mass, but, with, but we have to start with critical connection. And it's not fluff, and it's not um, just woo-woo, like actually trans transformational organizing. We have to break out of a patriarchal system of just transactional um, relationships that actually I'm just trying to invite you to my rally or my protest or my event. But actually, it's about seeing each other. It's about actually organizing people, putting our hands in the dirt, restoring our labor as people to take it out of the chains of the market and put it back into the web of life, not just as a visionary act, but as an oppositional act. Like, we have to do that to be able to transform out of this current economy, right? To transform power, take power out of the hands of those that are destructing our worlds and our communities. And we can't do that by just transactional organizing. Right? We can't just do that by just inviting someone and, um, or just you know, passing out flyers without actually knowing each other and without actually growing our souls together. Because that also grows trust, it grows community, you know, it grows this web of life amongst people and reclaims our connection um, to the rest of our community, to this larger world, and also to our ecology and all those things. Right? Ecology teaches us this principle in itself. And so for me, that's what it is. It's a really deep, beautiful um, point of conversation, what it means to grow our souls. I would say for me that um, in many ways, growing our souls has, has a dual aspect to it. It's your own individual soul, as well as that you can't only, you can only grow to a limited degree by yourself. So it has to do with some degree of collectivity. It's one of the things I feel is a slight backslide in today's movement from the past, in the sense that people call themselves activists. And that's an individual statement. I am an activist. Back in the day, we used to call ourselves community organizers. And by the very definition of that, you were in relationship with something else, something bigger than yourself, a community where there was a lot of struggle and back and forth and people presenting ideas and victories and defeats. But you were part of something larger than yourself. And I still like that definition better than just being an action. So, basically what it means is growing my soul is I can basically find ways to transform myself. And one example of that is I become very much involved in meditation, Buddhist meditation, which is how I met Brenda. <laughs> and back in the day, nobody talked about that. In fact, you were scared to talk about it with anybody. You wouldn't go into a Marxist group and say, I want to go to a meditation. <laughs> it wasn't just done. And so being part of being able to grow who I want to be, who I am, is to the greatest ability and to transform is to go beyond those self-proclaimed limitations. And the fact that a place like what's so great about this is an advertisement here for the East Bay Meditation Center is that when I go there, there are a lot of people who are political people who do politics. And so what they've seen is they needed to grow beyond going to meetings, going grow beyond going to demonstrations. 
grow beyond simply sloganeering about how bad the capitalist imperialist system was. And that, that there was a spiritual element which we hardly touched on in the 60s and, and 70s that was really important for our growth. And so we come there and we find people who, it's like a container for, for that kind of growth. And then it's uh, a really important part. So that's one piece of how I found a way to grow my soul. And the other part is finding communities of people, whether in my case it's my comrades in Pazahushka, Just Paz, or the Black Alliance, Just Immigration, people I've grown close to in my neighborhood, um, right next door, my next door neighbors, they're just not somebody I see in passing, but we try to develop relationships. That's hard given today's society, but uh, we need those kind of relationships. And I try to do that, and then of course I try to work with people who are different from me. And uh, uh, young, younger people, different ethnicities, and as I get a little older, I'm looking at the seniors up there, and how do I relate to being a senior? I'm in my 70s. And uh, it's like I know which way of the clock I'm going. And so how do I use that in a way that can broaden myself? And Grace was always good at saying, get away from those rigid categories. And basically, that's part of the transformation. And I guess the last thing I'm going to say, like I say, I'm getting older and I might forget. It is uh, one of the things that Grace taught me was a question are more important than answers. This question is what allows people to open up. Thank you for the EDMC plug. <laughs> <laughs>